Do you want to get started with GoodNotes but not sure how? Well, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to help you get started with digital planning in GoodNotes and take you from beginner to knowing how to navigate the app. I'm going to go through GoodNotes step by step and hopefully make things a little easier with your journey. I will also be sharing some useful tips and tricks. Now, this will definitely be a longer video, but I'll add timestamps below for anyone who wants to skip around. Let's get into it. If you want to bring documents you purchased into the GoodNotes app, they're usually downloaded from two places, Dropbox or Google Drive. I'm going to show you how to download from both. Let's start with Dropbox. When you open Dropbox, use the download icon in the top right to download the file. Select the icon in this pop-up box. You want to make sure you select continue with download only. Now select download again in the pop-up box. Go to the download icon on the toolbar, which is a circle with a down pointing arrow and select the file. Use the export icon and select GoodNotes from the dropdown. You can find GoodNotes in one of two places. It may be listed in the group of icons and if you don't see the GoodNotes option there, scroll down and you'll see the option to open in GoodNotes. When GoodNotes opens, you'll get this pop-up box asking do you want to import it as a new document. I'm going to select yes and the document will be imported into GoodNotes. Open the file in Google Drive, select the three dots to the right of the file. In the dropdown, select open in and the file will begin to download. Once you get the next pop-up box, you want to open with GoodNotes. When your file is sent to GoodNotes and you get this pop-up box, you can choose where you want to download the file. If you select the option for location, you can choose what folder you want the file to download in. And if you choose documents, it'll download to your home screen. When you open the GoodNotes app, the first thing you come to is this user interface or homepage. If this is your first time using GoodNotes, you will only have this dotted box with the plus sign. These are folders that I have created in the app, and this is how documents you import into the app look. This little plus icon does a lot in GoodNotes. Let me show you. You can use this icon to create custom notebooks in the app. With the notebook, you can customize the type of paper you want to use, and you can also customize the color. There are several covers that you can use for your notebooks, and you can customize the color on the notebook covers as well. Once you've selected the cover, select the color option and you can use the color customization options to create the notebook cover that you want. Once you've customized the colors on your notebook cover, you can then name your notebook and save it as a new cover template. You can also customize the paper templates in GoodNotes. Once you've chosen your paper template, then you can go to customize color and you can choose what color you want the template to be. And any of the paper templates that you customize in this section will be saved for future use. You can also customize the layout of your notebook. You can select whether you want portrait or landscape mode and then select the different sizes in the templates. The study set feature lets you create flashcards to use for studying. First, give your flashcard a title and then select the thumbnail color. Once you've selected your color, then select create. Once you've created your study set, here you will see two cards, one, for, one card for the front of your flashcard and the second card is for the back of your card. The first page is where you will write your question and the second page is for your answer. To create a new flashcard, you can use the page icon with the plus symbol on the toolbar or you can swipe left and it will give you a new page to use. You also have the option to change the style of the card. You can use the keyboard for the text option, insert an image on your flashcard, or handwrite your questions and answers. Once you finish your card, select the double boxes on the toolbar and it will give you the option for Smart Learn or Practice Mode. Smart Learn is a space repetition system that spaces out your practice over time. Smart Learn reviews how well you're doing with each individual card and customizes your learning to your individual progress on a day-to-day -day basis. Practice Mode allows you to review all of your flashcards in a single sitting. We're going to take a look at the practice mode. To use your cards, just tap on the question to review the answer and to move on to the next card, just select the next option in the bottom left. To create a folder, you want to select the plus sign in the dotted box and then folder from the drop down. From here, you can add a title to your folder and select the color from the options down at the bottom. You can also add an icon to your folder. Once you're done customizing your folder, you select done and then the folder will pop up in your document section. Now you can import items directly to your folder or drag and drop them to add them. You can also import images into GoodNotes. And once you've imported your image, you can customize it by adding text or stickers. This will be a good option to utilize if you wanted to customize your photos for a vision board or mood board. Once you've done that, you can just export the picture back out and add it to your vision board. GoodNotes also has a document scanning feature. This comes in handy when I have documents that I need to sign and return by email 
All you have to do is hold your iPad over the document that you want to scan and it'll automatically detect the edges, take the picture and import it into your documents. GoodNotes even has an option for you to take photos and import them directly into the app. All you have to do is select take photo from the drop down. And once you take the picture, use photo and it comes up as a new document. Now let's talk about the quick note option. If you ever need to write something down really fast, you can use the quick notes option. When you select quick notes, it will give you a sheet of paper. Once you've completed your note and you select the arrow to get back to the main screen, it'll give you the option to save this note to a document that you already have, or it will name the document with the first line of your note and save it as a document. You can also double tap on the plus sign and it'll open the quick note for you too. The paper will be the default template that you've saved in your notebook section. To change the default template, select the three dots and then change template from the drop down. From the home screen, you can also go to the settings icon and select manage notebook templates. Now let's go over the home page toolbar. The first option that you have on the toolbar is for documents and this is the home page that we just went over. Next, you have your favorites. When you select the star icon on your folders, this adds them to your favorites list. You can also add favorites within your documents or favorite the whole document. When you select your favorites from the home page, you have a filter option and you can look at everything you favorited in GoodNotes or just the documents, the pages, or the folders separately. The search option allows you to search everything you have in the GoodNotes app without having to look for it page by page. I'm going to search for goals. The search engine brings up everything that has the word goals, including stickers that I've saved. The search results are also categorized, making it even easier to find what you need. The share option allows you to look at all the documents that you shared with others. The marketplace offers digital products. Some are free and some you have to pay for. They have planners there. They have stickers, covers, cards, all from different creators. There's also an education section here that offers resources for exam preps and study guides. And some of those are free. Now let's talk about the first toolbar you see when you open a GoodNotes document. I'm going to call this one your main toolbar. This first waffle looking icon is your page view. Here you can delete pages, duplicate or add pages, change the order of your pages, select the bookmark icon at the top of a page to add it to your favorites, view your favorites, and the outline is a way to link pages in your document to get to them quicker. Magnifying glass is your search option and it allows you to search the document for terms. So it's just going to look inside this document. When I put in goals, it's just going to find where I've written goals in this document. The pen icon is how you actually turn on and off your planner. This is the icon that you would use to put your planner in edit mode. And if you select it again, it puts your planner in read mode, which is one of the easiest ways to use hyperlinks. The keyboard icon changes good notes to a typing mode, which allows you to use it similar to a word document. GoodNotes has also included an AI tool with this feature. Once the text has been typed, select your text in a pop-up toolbar, you'll see a star icon. Select the star icon and in the drop-down menu, select Make Longer and the AI feature will assist you with your writing. The microphone icon allows you to record as you take notes. Select the microphone to start the recording and use the orange icon with the square to stop the recording. To access your notes, select the wave icon to the right of the magnifying glass. This will pull up your most recent recording. When playing back your recording, your notes will appear in sync with the audio. To access previous recordings, select the down arrow under the timer. To delete a recording, select the audio clip and pull it to the left and then select the trash can. The add page icon comes with a lot of options. The first is you can add pages before or after your current template. Make sure you select before or after, and then the last option gives you the option to add a page to the last page of your document or your planner. You can also use the paper templates in GoodNotes to add a page to your document. From here, you can add an image to your document. You can scan documents to add. You can take a photo, or you can import a document from your file. The next icon is your bookmarker, and you can select this icon to add pages to your favorites. Next, we have the exporting icon, and this icon gives you the option to export your document as a PDF, an image, or a GoodNotes file. You also have the option to create a link that you can share with others to collaborate on your document. When exporting from GoodNotes, you can export the whole document or you can choose the page that you want to export. You also have the same options if you want to print from your document. 
The last part of this drop down is your presentation mode, so how you present your document to others. The last icon is the three dots, and that's your more options. The first feature allows you to copy the page, and this is how you would copy templates and paste them wherever you want to use them in your planner. Next, you can rotate the pages in your planner by using the second option in this drop down list, and it gives you the option to rotate by degrees. You can use the add page to outline feature to link pages in your planner to create different sections as you need it. Let's say you had your daily planner and you wanted to link them to some notes that you were taking for work that same day. You can create the outline for that using this feature. The next option in the drop down allows you to change the template that you are currently using. So I can change the background color of this template and keep all of my notes on the same template. So I'm going to change it to yellow and you can see how that works. I found that this option works best when you use a notebook or a document that you created within GoodNotes. If you know the page number that you want to jump to in your document, you can use the go to page option, enter the page number, and it'll jump to the page that you want to use. If you made an error on your document and you need to start completely over, instead of deleting the page line by line or using the eraser tool, you can go to the three dots and clear the page and it'll take everything you've written or added to the page off. Now, if you want to get rid of the page altogether, you have the option to move the page to trash, which will delete the page from your document. You also have the option here to change your scrolling direction. I like to use the horizontal scroll because it makes it feel like I'm flipping pages, but you can also do a vertical scroll and scroll the page up and down. The next option is for your stylus and palm rejection, and this can help with your writing. You can set the sensitivity to your palm here and also select the positioning of your palm that you typically hold when you're writing. The last option on this menu is for your document editing and there are a few features that are listed here. I'm just gonna highlight a few, like the status bar. If you toggle this off, it'll remove the time and day area on your iPad and give you more space with your GoodNotes. You can also turn on and off the pull to add a page and GoodNotes recently updated and added the option that you can customize your toolbar. So using this feature, you can hide the tools on your toolbar that you don't typically use as much as other tools. Like I don't use the laser and I don't use the ruler as much as some of my other tools. So I'm going to hide those on my toolbar. Whatever tools you decide to hide on your toolbar, they'll still be accessible by using this drop down and you'll be able to access the tools here. Now let's get into the editing toolbar in GoodNotes. The first tool you have is your pen tool and there are three pens that you can use in GoodNotes. The fountain pen, the ball pen, and then the brush pen. The pen that I use the most in GoodNotes is the ball pen. It gives me more of a pen to paper feel. Once you've selected your pen, you can also select how thick your pen writes. So you can change the settings. You have the thin option, the medium, and then a thicker option. And whichever option you choose, you can also adjust the scale on that option to the thickness that you want. You can also choose if you want the pen to give you a solid line, a dashed line, or a dotted line. There are also a few pen gestures you can use. If you want to remove something you wrote, you can use the scribble to erase option. The circle to lasso lets you switch to the lasso tool quickly while writing with the pen. Just circle what you want to move and hold down on the circle and it'll turn it into the lasso. There's also a shortcut for erasing. You can double tap on the screen to undo the last pen stroke that you made. Once you have the pen tool selected, if you tap the pen tool again, you'll get the drop down for the settings for your pen. Here you can toggle on the option to draw a straight line, to snap into shape and to fill color. So any shapes that you draw, the color will automatically fill in. With the draw to straight line option, I use that up top. When I drew the straight line and I hold on the end of the line, it makes a perfect line. With the draw to snap into shape, when you draw a shape like this triangle, it automatically fixes and makes it a perfect triangle. It also filled in the color with this and I double tapped on the screen and it removed the border from around the shape. And if you toggle off the fill color option, it'll just draw your shape without filling in the color of the pen. There are three different erasers that you can use. The precision eraser, the standard eraser, and the stroke eraser. The precision eraser erases the precise location that you're trying to erase. The standard eraser works like a pencil eraser. And the stroke eraser, it erases by each stroke that you've made. The 
erasers have three different sizes that you can use, small, medium, and large. The eraser tool comes with a few settings that may be helpful. The first one is auto deselect, which I keep toggled on. This setting is helpful because whenever you're using the eraser, it automatically switches back to the tool you were previously using before you selected the eraser. The next setting is the erase highlighter only, which removes the highlighter and leaves the text. Make sure you toggle this setting off after use. Now let's talk about the highlighter tool. I recommend toggling on the draw in a straight line setting for the highlighter. With the setting on, when you use the highlighter and hold it at the end, it will create a straight line. Like the pen tool, there are three size highlighters that you can use and each has a sliding scale you can use to adjust the thickness. One question I get is how I create the dots that I use in my planner. I choose the biggest highlighter and set it to the thickest option and just do a quick tap on the page and you can use these dots to add some color to your checklist. Adding colors to both the pen and highlighter is the same process. Select one of the circles with the color or the dotted circle with the plus sign. The first page you come to will show you all of your saved colors. The next page has the color grid that you can use to customize your colors. On this page, there's also a color wheel at the right of the hex code that can be used to select a color. You can also search on Pinterest for hex codes. I just use GoodNotes highlighter hex codes for my search. Go back to GoodNotes and select one of the color circles again. Scroll to the bottom until you see the dotted circle with the plus sign. When you get to the custom page, add in your hex code. And once you have the hex code in and the color appears to the left, you're gonna select the circle with the color and the plus sign to add it to your library. To add highlighter and pin colors to your favorites, just select the dotted circle with the plus sign. When the drop down opens, select the color that you wanna add. To remove a color from your favorites, select the circle with the color, select the settings icon to the top left of the drop down, and then remove color slot. You can also add colors by using the color dropper tool. To get to the color dropper tool, go to the custom section and select the dropper at the top right of the drop down box. Now you can just move the color picking tool over any color and it'll give you the hex code that you can add to your library. If you're like me and not the best drawer, the shape tool has you covered. With the shape tool, you can draw any shape and hold on the shape and it'll snap it in place for you perfectly. The shape tool also has a setting where you can fill in the color of the pen that you're using automatically. If you want to remove the border from around your shape, you can use the back button or you can double tap on the screen and it'll remove the lines. The shape tool also comes in handy if you want to time block your day out on your schedule. The lasso tool is probably the most used tool in GoodNotes. You can do a lot with the lasso tool. You can use the lasso tool to circle and move objects around on your paper. You can use the copy and paste feature on your documents. You can also use the lasso tool to delete items from your document. The lasso tool can also be used for resizing on your document. You can also use the lasso tool to make changes to your template. If you draw a circle on the background of the template, it'll give you the option to take a screenshot. You're gonna use the export in the right corner and then select copy from the dropdown. Hold on your template and select paste. Now you will have a box the same color as your background that you can resize to cover anything you want on your template. You can also move sections around on your template. Just use the lasso tool to circle the section that you want to move. Take a screenshot of the section. Select the export icon. In the drop down list, select copy. Now you can paste that section anywhere on your template that you want to use it. There may be times when you want to use the lasso tool and not move everything. You can use the settings to toggle off what you want to stay in place. For example, if you wanted to move the text and handwriting and leave the image, just toggle off images. There's an auto select feature that's on automatically in GoodNotes. Whether you're using your pen or your highlighter, you can tap on an object and it'll automatically select it. I'm gonna turn this feature off, select the three dots and document editing. In the pop-up box, scroll down, toggle off image text box and equations. Now you won't accidentally move your images. The photo tool can be used to select images or pictures that you have in your document. It can also import images and media to your document. And you can use the crop option in the photo tool to make changes to your images. Elements tool is like a storage place with inside of GoodNote. You can use the elements tool is to store your favorite stickers. You can store them by collections and each collection shows in the oval shapes at the bottom. 
If you would like a larger view of the elements tool, you can select the icon in the top right. It'll give you a split screen with the elements tool. There are a few ways that you can add to the elements tool. You can use the lasso tool and when you circle on an object and in the toolbar, you'll have the option for add to element. You can also use the photo tool and when you select the image in that toolbar, it'll give you the option to add to element. Another way that you can add stickers to your elements tool is to use the PNG file and you can save the sticker collection straight into the elements tool. Just use your split screen option and open files. When you have your files open, search for the stickers that you wanna add. Open your elements tool and scroll all the way over until you get to the blue icon with the timer. This is where you can add in a new collection. You're gonna give your collection a name. There's a select all in the top right corner. If you hit select all, it'll put a check in all of your stickers. If you hold on one of the stickers, they'll group together. And when you drag it, it'll bring the whole sticker collection over and add it to your elements tool. You can also use the import from feature at the bottom and it'll open your file and you can bring the stickers in from here. You've added your stickers, you can select the create and now the stickers will be ready for you to use in your elements tool. Now let's talk about the text tool. To the right of the text icon, you'll notice there's a box with a font name in it. To change the font, select the drop down and then the font you wanna use. I'll link a tutorial here for downloading free fonts that you can add for your planners. Once you've selected the font you wanna use and the size, you might notice that when you use the font, it changes back or didn't save the font that you just selected. To lock your font in or save the font, once you have your font and your size selected, go back to the text icon and in the drop down, select set as default. You'll want to do this every time you change your font so you can continue to use the font in your planner. If you want your handwriting to convert to text as you're writing, you'll have to go to settings and scroll down to Apple Pencil. Then toggle on the scribble option in the Apple Pencil settings. Now you can set the text option and in good notes, your handwriting will convert to the font that you have selected. You can also convert your handwriting to text after you've written something. Use the lasso tool to circle the handwritten text and on the pop-up toolbar, select convert and then text. Check your text in the pop-up box to make sure everything converted correctly. If it didn't, at this point, you can make changes to your text. Now select convert to change your text. You can also use the text tool to create label stickers. Select the square with the slash through it and in the drop down, select background color. Now you can customize the label color. When you go back to your document to add text, it will create a sticker. You can use the same drop down to further customize the sticker by rounding out the edges or adding a border. The next icon on the toolbar is for your zoom feature. The zoom feature can be used to improve your handwriting. You can move the zoom box to the space you wanna add your writing. In the text box below, everything's been magnified for you to add your handwriting. The ruler is a tool that you can use just like a ruler. If you need to make a straight line to help you with a triangle. To reposition the ruler, you can use your two fingers to move it around your page. And if you tap the ruler, you'll get an option to set the angle or position. The laser tool is a tool I probably should use more than I do. The laser tool is used to help for presentations. There's a line option and you can also use a dot option. There are a few ways to use the split screen feature. You can select the three dots and in the drop down select split view. This will take you back to the home page so you can choose which app you want to open. Using the split screen, you can have two GoodNotes documents open at the same time. Use the black bar down the middle of the screen to adjust the sizing of your screens. Also swipe up from the bottom from the pop-up toolbar, drag an app on the screen to open the split screen feature. To close the split screen, just pull the black bar to the end of the screen on the right or the left. Whichever side you slide the bar to is the screen that will close. Let me show you real quick a few ways that you can use digital stickers in your planner. I'm gonna open a sticker sheet that I already have downloaded. From here, I can use the lasso tool to copy and paste the stickers on my document. I can also use the photo tool to select the sticker, copy it and paste it on my planner. You can use the split screen to have your planner and your stickers open at the same time. Use the lasso tool to lasso the sticker and then just hold in a circle and you can drag the sticker across to your planner. With the split screen option, you can also open the PNG file and hold on the sticker and drag it across to your document. 
Since we're talking about stickers, let me show you a few ways you can make your own in GoodNotes. Using the shape tool, draw a square. Now select the lasso tool and copy the square and paste it. Then add the copy on top of the original square. Repeat this until you get the color that you want. I'm also going to create a small rectangle and repeat the previous steps to get the color right. When I move the rectangle to the top right corner of the square, it creates a sticky note with tape that I can use in my planner. Now we already talked about bringing images into GoodNotes using your photo tool. You can definitely use photos from your camera roll as pictures in your planner. You can also use a split screen option to open the Pinterest website. Now this will only work with the website, not the app. If you hold on an image from the website, you can drag it over and use it in your planner. This is what I use to create my vision and mood boards. Using the photo tool, select your image and in the pop-up toolbar, select crop. At the bottom of the pop-up box, toggle on freehand. You can use the freehand option in the crop tool to create customized stickers. You can use the lasso or photo tool to get to the arrange feature. Select the image and then arrange from the pop-up toolbar. Now you have the option to move what you selected to the back or bring it to the front. This feature is really helpful when you're layering your stickers. Now let's talk about hyperlinks. I'm gonna show you a few ways I use hyperlinks in my planner. Here I've added the website for the Publix online shopping. I'm gonna change the font to white to match the background and place my grocery shopping sticker over the font. When I use my grocery shopping sticker like this, it's hyperlinked to take me directly to the store so I can start my shopping. Also add your own hyperlinks within the GoodNotes app. So you can add hyperlinks to your planner for things that you wanna to link together. Just add the text that you wanna link, then select the text and in the pop-up menu, select add link. I'm gonna link this to page two in this document. To get rid of the dotted line under the link text, I'm gonna add another page one. I'm gonna change the font on the link color to white to match the background, and I'm gonna increase the size on it. Now I'm gonna add the second page one over the white text, and I've created a hyperlink to page two without the line. The last thing I wanna go over is how to empty your trash. From the main home screen, use the tool icon in the top right. From the drop down, select trash. The pop-up will open your trash bin. From here, if there are any pages or documents that you have deleted by accident, you can recover the page and it will return to its previous place. Just select the drop down under the page and select recover. Make sure you empty your trash bin periodically to keep your good notes from lagging. You can use the select option to delete a few pages or you can use the empty option to delete everything. All right, y'all, I hope this video has been helpful and you found value in this content. I'll link the few tutorials below that can also help you learn more about GoodNotes. If there's anything else you would like to see, leave it in the comments below. All right, y'all, till next time.